From the air, you can see the damage that's caused by fire. In Cyprus, summers last for months. Without rainfall, the land gets very dry and flames can spread in minutes. 84 squadrons support the island's fire services. They're on standby to help with water drops and this has been another busy year. Usually um, we can get the aircraft going if the crews are in work and ready to go within about 15 minutes of getting the call. In the height of the summer we can expect um, several call outs per week. It's very rewarding. It's providing support. You can see the benefit immediately and, uh, and you're really offering a service um, to the fire service who sometimes with the terrain here they can't get to the fire. They just can't physically get to the, to the area where, where the ground is burning. In June there were three times as many fires recorded compared to the past three years. One fire was so bad, it threatened four villages and shut the main motorway for six hours. Sadly, it wasn't the first or the last. There have been a number of fires across the island this summer. Some started through negligence, others started deliberately. During one weekend in August, fire crews from the Republic of Cyprus found themselves tackling more than a dozen fires at once crews were pushed to the limit. 84 Squadron were called out more than 20 times to help. One fire was particularly close to home. On the 17th of August, a fire raced through Episcopi. Having started at a rubbish tip, the winds carried the flames towards the village and nearby archaeological site. It was just a kilometre from Episcopi station. 84 Squadron joined crews from across Cyprus to fight the fire. The aircrew on board carried out 24 water drops from Kurian Bay for as long as they could. I think the village was, was lucky with the wind. It just pushed everything just around the outside. Before you go into anything like that, the first couple of runs we take very uh, carefully. We uh, pick up any risks, we identify any uh, uh, wires, and there were some large 300-foot pylons just to the south which we uh, identified a couple of masts and then we really need to keep an eye on the other aircraft so as we, we pick up the water and as we're going in we're right I can identify five other, other aircraft to clear of the area the area we identify where we're going to try and drop it's in the smoke where we've got no wires and no masts to affect and then it's in and dropping and then get out of that smoke as quick as you can. Each water drop carries up to a thousand litres of water. The bucket they use is called a Bambi and it's a skill they regularly practice. But when you add in the flames and the smoke, it's not always easy. It can be quite a difficult task, particularly in the high temperatures and the, uh, if you're picking up water from quite high up the mountainside. It's, um, it's a tiring job. Um, often you've got um, seven, eight aircraft all aiming for the same small area of airspace, um, which uh, means you have to really have your wits about you and you have to have a, a good level of situational awareness. That combined with potentially the visibility might be reduced due to smoke in that small area of airspace um, means that it is a very mentally challenging uh, job, uh, particularly if you're doing it over prolonged periods. Last week, Akrotiri had its first rainfall in five months, but the land is still parched and the squadron are still on standby. Their work has saved dozens of properties and farms this summer, but the team are ready in case any more flames take hold. Carla Prater, Forces News, at RAF Akrotiri.